Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel guys. Today we will be introducing ourselves to the Go programming language. We will be discussing what is the Go programming language, who developed the Go programming language and why was it developed. In spite of having so many wonderful languages like Python, C++, Java, why did someone feel a need to have a brand new programming language? What are the features that Go has to offer? What is the status of Go today? Who all are using Go? How popular is it is? What is the average salary of a Go developer? And so on. And what are the resources for learning Go? So what is Go? Go is a programming language which was developed by Google in 2007. It was open sourced by Google in 2009. And the first major version of Go released back in 2012. Now, to put things in a bit of a perspective, you should know that Java came into existence in 1994. So it is 18 years older to go. One more interesting thing to note is that multi-core processors became available in the market from 2006. So Go was developed after the advent of multi-core processors. Later in the video, we will see why that matters. Let us first meet the creators of Go. So literally, Go is created by legends and this is probably by far the most exciting slide on this entire presentation. So who all do we have here? We have Ken Thompson. Ken Thompson is the developer and implementer of the original Unix operating system. And as we all know today, most of our operating systems such as Mac and Linux are based on Unix. So for operating systems as we know them today, we really have to be thankful to Ken Thompson. He was also the inventor of the B programming language, which is the predecessor of the C programming language. And he was the chief professor, and he was the chief professor who was developing the C programming language. Alongside of Dennis Ritchie. Next, we have Rob Pike. Rob Pike is the creator of the UDF-8 encoding system, which is one of the most commonly used encoding systems. And he also worked along with Ken Thompson at the Bell Labs on the Unix team. And last but not the least, we have Robert Grazmer, who has worked on both the JavaScript V8 engine, which has made the entire Node.js language possible, as well as on the Hotspot JVM. So that is the Go team. And the situation might have been like, you know, literally having so many intelligent people in one room. So these three gentlemen came together and saw that there is a pressing need of a new programming language. And why? Let's see that on the next slide. So why do we need a new language? So uh, we see logos of three very famous languages here, which are Python, Java, as well as C++. But each one has certain pros and certain cons. While Py Python is very easy to use, it is extremely slow as compared to Java and C++. Java, again, while being extremely robust and versatile, has a very complex type system, complex generics, complex exception handling, and too much complexity is getting added into the language. And when it comes to C and C++, again, they have a complex type system and extremely slow compile times. And that really starts to hamper developer productivity. Also, one very important thing to make note of here is that these programming languages came into existence in the 20th century. And during that time, the world of computers was dominated by single core standalone systems. However, there was a large paradigm shift towards the 21st century where the status quo has become multi-core distributed systems. So the Go programming language was introduced by Google to help solve Google's problems. And given the scale that Google works at, Google's problems were really big problems. Now, since Java, Python, as well as C++ came into existence before multi-core network systems, they were just working around the problems introduced by such systems rather than challenging them head on. Also, at a large organization such as Google, a single software might comprise of tens of millions of lines of code and hundreds and sometimes even thousands of developers work on a single project. And why is that a problem? It becomes a problem because at a time like this, if you do not have good maintainability or good readability in your code, many, many man hours of developer time will be wasted. 
And finally, to make matters even worse than they already were, build times were taking many, many minutes and many, many hours at times. Again, giving a blow to developer productivity. And that is where exactly the Go programming language enters the scene. So Go addresses these problems by attempting to combine the ease of programming of interpreted or dynamically typed languages such as Python, which with the efficiency and the safety of a statically typed language such as C++ and Java. And since Go came into existence after we had the multi-core processors, as well as networked and cloud computing systems, Go was aimed to be very modern because it was developed by keeping these new features of computer paradigms in mind. And finally, working with Go is intended to be fast as it can churn out large executables on a single computer within a few seconds. So as we can see, great things happen when you have a bunch of intelligent people on your teams. Now, before we go further and I introduce you to the awesome features that Go has, let me tell you some of the features which Go doesn't have, which you as a programmer coming from a programming background of Python, C++ or Java or some other programming language might be expecting Go to have. So it's a small list. It's not exhaustive, but um, you'll get the point. Go does not have header files. Go does not have inheritance. Go doesn't have exceptions. Go does not have constructors or destructors. Go doesn't have void. Go does not have annotations. Go doesn't have classes. Neither does it have objects. Neither function, function overloading. Neither implicit type conversion. Nor does it have templates. And nor does it have generics. And also emits many more things I did not cover in the list. Now, some of you really might be thinking, <laughs> you might be really pissed off. Like, are you kidding me? Go doesn't have any of these modern programming features. Have, have we been taken back to the 1980s? How are we supposed to do our job without all of these? Well, there's no need to worry. Just hang on with me till the end of the presentation. So Ken Thompson, one of the people on the Go team says that when the three of us, which is Thompson, Pike and Graysimmer, got started, it was pure research. So they were researching ways in which they could solve the problems that Google was facing, which we saw a couple of slides back. The three of us got together and decided that we hated C++. <laughs> and that's like absolutely not uncommon as most people do. Now, if you, you are a C++ dev, please don't take offense and just stick around. Returning to Go, we started off with the idea that all three of us had to be talked into every feature in the language. So there was no extraneous garbage put into the language for any reason. So as you can see, it seems out that any one of them could veto out features that they found would be like bloating the Go programming language. A feature could get into Go only if the three of them agreed and therefore they made so many omissions which they found were really not required in the language. So let us see what are the things that actually made a cut into the Go programming language and what makes Go so awesome. So here we see that Go has simplicity. It has readability. It has maintainability. It has concurrency. In RockPyte's own words, just in three keystrokes, you can achieve concurrency in Go. Next, we see that Go has garbage collection. Go is cross-platform. Go has packages. Go has a C-like syntax. Go allows us to have quick compilation. Go has a strong community. And again, many more features, which I'm skipping for sake of brevity at this time. Now, these features that you see here, many of them are like very awesome features from a software development lifecycle perspective. Let's take an example. You are working on a project at Google right now. But will you be always working there? You might get moved to a different project. You might move to a different company. You might even move to a different kind of a profession. But someone else still has to maintain that code. And that is where having less bloat in a language 
allows other developers to easily read as well as maintain your code. So every feature that you saw made it into Go and did not make it into Go was very, very, very well thought of by the authors of the language. And they really wanted to optimize and maximize developer productivity in today's multi-core distributed computing environment. Here we have a quote on simplicity by Ditstra, who, uh, as you all might be knowing from the Ditstra's shortest path algorithm. So he says that simplicity is a great virtue, but it requires hard work to achieve it and education to appreciate it. And to make matters worse, complexity sells better. <laughs> so as you can see, the biggest USP of Go is its simplicity. And only by pruning down the bloat of other programming languages could Go achieve this level of simplicity. Uh, let us next try to see where Go stands today. So this is a screenshot from the Stack Overflow Developer Survey from 2020. As you can see on the screen, Go is the fifth most loved programming language. Now we should really take a second to appreciate that in the last eight years, Go has climbed up to this position and become almost as loved as Python. Next, we see that Go is also the third most wanted programming language, only next to Python as well as JavaScript. Again, tremendous impact in just a short span. And who uses Go? All of these amazing companies use Go. Obviously, Google does because they created Go for themselves and later open sourced it. Apart from that, Dropbox, Netflix, SoundCloud, Uber, Twitch, and so many more companies. There's a long list at the source written at the bottom. I'll link it in the description below. So you should definitely go and check it out and see if your company is also using Go. And in the next slide, we have the most fun bit, which I feel many people would definitely be concerned with. Let us see what that is. And that is the salary. So according to Stack Overflow's survey in 2020, Go is the third most highly paid technology worldwide. And you can see it is only next to Perl as well as Scala. And just an honorable mention, you do not even see JavaScript in the top seven nor do you see Python. Let's uh, look at the same insights for the United States. And here Go is the second most highly paid technology. Again, Go has achieved all of this within such a short span of time. By seeing all of this, we can definitely say that many of the organizations are adopting Go and they really are looking for good Go developers. And so I feel that definitely anyone has incentive in learning about Go. If you're looking to read more about Go, the first thing I would suggest is you definitely read the blog given here. I will link it down in the description below. And it is a very awesome blog, which tells us why all the design decisions of Go were made. Now I'd like to quickly show you some Go resources. And for that, I'll be heading to this website, golang.org, which is the homepage for Go programming language. You can see Go is an open source programming language that makes it easy to build simple, reliable and efficient software. They have given a small uh, playground over here where you could run a small program and uh, it says hello and something in Japanese, probably world. There are some featured videos by Rob Pike. Oh, oh my God, do, do watch this one. It was really good. I watched it a couple of days ago and there are some featured articles as well. Uh, let's see what's there in the documents. So this is the documentation for Go. You could go here and see how to install Go, tutorials for getting started, creating a module, a small tour of Go. Again, very interesting and I recommend you check it out. How to write Go code, editors, IDEs, effective Go once you start maturing in Go. You should definitely read this article. It's really awesome. Diagnostics, tutorials, and so much. Package documentations, commands, languages, Go memory model, release history, and so many articles. So much to read about Go. It's definitely so amazing. 
so let us see uh, what do we have here uh, package documentation so these are all the standard library packages that we have here so we can see we have compress containers cryptography stuff related to debugging encoding errors go standard library hashing html because um, go does allow you to work with html and templating work with images um, indexing io logging math net uh, which is for networking uh, os working with the os runtime sort string text time unicode and unsafe so go definitely is providing you with many amazing features out of the box because again like a good language has a good standard library and the Go designers made sure that you are getting the features which make it easier for you to work and help you be more productive. And one more interesting thing that we have here is the Go Playground. Uh, here we can type in certain programs and run this. It won't run all programs, especially the ones having concurrency, but simple programs, definitely you can come here and play around with Go. Now to just conclude this video, I really feel you should definitely give Go a chance and try to learn the basics. And if you find it interesting, I feel that you should definitely pursue it. If you are looking for a tutorial on Go, I have already started a playlist which you can access by clicking the i button above. It is on YouTube. It is absolutely free of cost. And we will be learning from the very basics and learning by seeing a lot of examples. So if you do want to learn Go with me, please do check out the i button above. And I really hope that this video was really helpful for you and put a lot of things into perspective. I decided to record this because I get it asked a lot, should you be learning Go or not? And my answer would be yes, you should definitely give it a chance. So if you find the content of the video helpful, please do hit the like button. You can hit subscribe to subscribe to my channel if you find the content of my channel helpful. You can also please hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any new updates. And like always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you soon in another new video.